Clinging to a fluffy koala toy more than double her size, orphan Joey Ajuni is the latest rescue for volunteer Emma Meadows. A Judy was actually found by herself in the middle of Appen Row just after midnight by a lovely gentleman who um, obviously swerved to avoid hitting her and then stopped and picked her up off the road. She came into care at 580 grams, so she's put on just over 100 grams in the week and a little bit that she's been in care. But the baby marsupial is a lucky survivor. Her mother was found nearby suffering critical injuries after being hit by a car. For Meadows, it is a familiar story, as Australia's rapidly expanding cities increasingly force koalas to risk roads and dog attacks in search of eucalyptus trees or a mate. It's hard. It's hard at times. You know, seeing what we see, those 40 koalas that have been hit on Appen Road in the last two years, I've pretty much pulled every single one of those bodies off the road or taken them to the vet to be, you know, to die. So it's huge. It's a massive toll. Estimates of koala numbers in the wild vary greatly with the latest government data suggesting there are between 224,000 and 524,000 animals. In 2022, the Australian government listed koalas in New South Wales, Queensland and the Australian Capital Territory as threatened. But wandering for food and shelter also poses another risk, one that experts warn could wipe out the animals within decades. A large number of the populations have chlamydia within them. There's one really significant population in southwest Sydney which is chlamydia free and that's the population that everybody's very jealously guarding. There is no guarantee into the future that every one of the koalas that gets out doesn't become infected by a population that's close by and then come back in. Professor Annabelle Olson, whose wildlife hospital is in the heart of Sydney's last chlamydia free koala population, says without action, the disease, which causes infertility and even death, could further devastate the species. If we continue on the trajectory we're on with habitat destruction, you know, our, our grandchildren or at least their grandchildren are going to see maybe koalas in a zoo if they're lucky. Well, it'll be the thylacine or Tasmanian tiger all over again. But University of Sunshine Coast researcher Samuel Phillips may have a new vaccine that could bolster efforts to save the fluffy tree dwellers. We were able to show that a vaccine that targets a specific gene within chlamydia can have a positive effect on the koala population. Our plan is to roll this out as in addition to a lot of the methods that are currently being developed to protect koala populations that are at risk. Phillips' team vaccinated and monitored 165 koalas for 10 years and found inoculated marsupials developed chlamydia later in life and the mortality was reduced by 64%. Queensland trial of the vaccination used in conjunction with traffic and predator controls was so successful that a local koala population that had been doomed for extinction within 10 years instead rebounded. Chlamydia vaccine research will probably be quite pivotal um, for populations that we're trying to protect from the disease of infertility if you like but I have to stress that this research is in its infancy and in the immediate future there's no magic pill that's going to fix this chlamydia problem. For Olsen and her team, the vaccine could be a vital defence. But she says better conservation is still within reach. While it seems doom and gloom at the moment, we can afford to be a little bit positive and say we still have the potential to make this right. Won't be tomorrow, won't be next year, but as long as we are all in that mindset that this is an achievable task, then it is going to be possible for our grandchildren and their grandchildren to actually see koalas in the wild. The time to act was already, you know, yesterday, last year, last decade. It's, I'm, I'm scared it's too late. I continue to do what I do because somebody needs to make a difference and I feel that this is one way in the world that I can make a difference. I'm, you know, it breaks my heart because I want everybody's children to be able to see what we've got and I want them to see them in the wild. We need to have wild populations and we really need to act and we need to do something because it's not okay to leave this planet without this species and that's what, you know, our generation, the generations before us are doing.